Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 21 Hats podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Feldman. This week, Dana White drops a few surprises. When we began this podcast in 2020, Dana had two promising hair salons in Detroit that she'd named after her grandmother, Paralee Boyd. She had an innovative business model designed specifically for women with thick and curly hair, and she was on her way to winning a prestigious business plan competition, all of which presented her with a wide array of opportunities to consider. Would she continue to bootstrap? Would she franchise? Would she take on an investor? Would she open salons on military bases? But the pandemic hit her hard. Struggling to find both employees and customers, she eventually decided to close her Detroit locations and open a new one in Dallas, where she hoped the greater population density would help her make a fresh start. But in this episode, Dana tells Jay Goltz and Laura Zander that she's come to a painful realization. Harley Boyd is not working. Even in good times, owning and running a business can be a lonely pursuit. Our hope is that these weekly conversations, brought to you by our principal sponsor, The Great Game of Business, will let owners know they are not alone in facing challenges. Same thing with our daily newsletter, The 21 Hats Morning Report, which Inc. Magazine named the best newsletter for business owners and which you can subscribe to for free at 21hats.com. We can also find transcripts of our podcast episodes and lots of other articles and interviews. Joining me this week on the podcast are regulars Jay Goltz, CEO of the Goltz Group, whose companies in Chicago include a picture frame business, artist frame service, and a home furnishing store, Jason Home. Dana White, who is in the process of opening a new hair salon at Fort Liberty, which used to be Fort Bragg, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And Laura Zander, who is CEO of Jimmy Bean's Wool, a digital yarn store based in Reno, Nevada, and Madeline Tosh, a yarn supplier based in Fort Worth, Texas. The episode is titled, Start Up, Throw Up, and Grow Up. Welcome, Jay, Dana, and Laura. It's great to have you all here, especially you, Dana. We haven't spoken in quite some time. How are you doing? I'm well, Lauren. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. What's going on? Um, let's see. I've grown up. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I didn't know you needed to grow up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're breathing, you need to grow. But I've really grown up. I've like Sequoia Redwood grown up. Aww. In what way? What did what happened? Well, it's different for everybody. But for me, it's looking around and being very honest about what's working, what's not working and why it's not working. And as much as I love Paralee Boyd. Paralee Boyd is not working. Wow. And it's not working because I have three major reasons. Um, and this is, you know, pulling a page out of Jay's book and you sit there and you have your list, right? One, Paralee Boyd isn't working because my market, this is not what my market wants. My market wants wigs, weaves, dreads, braids. That's what my market wants. And it's not something, you know, you're imagining. You can go to a major airport. You can go to a major city, which I was in. You could go anywhere. And most of the women that look like me are not wearing their hair like me, period. Is that different than when you started? In Michigan. Yes and no. Well, New York, right, is where the inspiration came from, wasn't it, when you were in New York City? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And it was in 2010, 11, 12. Yes and no. Right. Because these women were coming to these salons in between getting their wigs, weaves and braids. And as they like to call them protective styles, which are not really true. That's the first thing. Second thing is first thing is my market. Second thing is staffing. I had to look from staffing as a reflection not as from Dana's perspective, but from the mindset of my staff members. And Jay and I have had several conversations over the years where he's put that into perspective, but I didn't put all of those perspectives together. I really, truly understand who I was hiring. And one, my employee base doesn't fit the vision that I'm trying to make, right? They come to the interview and they see Dana and they put their best foot forward for Dana, right? Dana's personable. Dana's funny. Dana's not the distant, aloof owner. 
you really can't talk to her. Dana's right there. So they're like, oh my God, I'm inspired. I can be like that. I'm going to do my best. But that's not what they can do, right? And so they, they present themselves very well in an interview because I'm a reflection of them that they don't see very often, right? And so they're like, I'm going to do my best, but they're not really capable or willing to say, yeah, I'm limited, right? So you're wondering why you get these people that are applying that are qualified, but they're not able to do the job. And the third thing is me. Paralee Boyd was born of a love for women that look like me that were not being serviced in the marketplace. However, the service that they wanted was not the service of Dana, meaning Dana, Paralee Boyd is a reflection of how you wear your hair, how what you do for yourself, not a reflection of what the majority of women do. Even in the name, the name has something to do with me, not my market. I thought it would resonate with my market being an old Southern name, but my market and most people- Explain how you got the name. It's my grandmother's name and it's an old Southern, you know, and you thought, hey, that that would resonate, but it's not, it doesn't because it's it's a tongue twister. And so you have to give them things that are bite-sized so they don't have to pull their attention from whatever else they're thinking about to patronize your business. Are you talking about the consumers here? or The, the ones? consumers. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the consumers span. and quite honestly, your staff, right? You right. have to make it bite-sized, right? And Dana is a bite-sized. Dana can hear a word, oh, that's fine, right? Dana's a little different. And again, years ago, Jay and I had that conversation. I just didn't put it all together. And I concluded that Paralee Boyd was more about me and what I wanted for my market as opposed to my market and where they are. They're not getting their hair done like that. They don't want to do their hair like that. They want to get it done and not touch it for weeks at a time. You know, some do, some don't, but most don't. If you were to walk out right now and go to an airport or go to a large black metropolitan area, most women have wigs, weaves, dreads, braids, protective styles. Very few of us are actually wearing our hair. Very few of us are actually getting blowouts every week or every other week. We're just not doing it. And so I tried to revolutionize the industry. And my dear friend, who's also a very successful businesswoman, said, Paralee Boyd is the best idea that none of us want because we don't have your level of hair freedom. And I'm one children, I'm black woman. I don't just jump in a pool. Dana does. Right. And doesn't think about it. Dana cuts her hair. I just cut my hair a couple months ago. It was, it was practically midway down my back. I cut it off. That is, she goes, I'm not saying we don't do that, but we don't do that in mass. That's not the norm for us. And so she said, right now I have a weave in my hair. My other girlfriend said, I have a eight piece in my hair because I just don't want to be bothered with it. And that was it. So how much of this though, was moving from Detroit to Texas because it was working at some point. It was. Or is the market changed or is it both? It was both. So it was working, but it wasn't working as well as it should have been from what I, and I'm I'm comparing myself to other salons, right? Meaning, you know, their monthly revenue compared to mine, it was doing okay. We weren't ever making money. We weren't making enough money to service the debt and we weren't making enough money to pay me consistently and comfortably. Can I just help you with, you know, I don't think you meant that it should have been making. I think you mean to say what you needed to make. So, Paralee Boyd is no more. Whoa. Wow. There's the product line and that may go forward in other aspects, but as far as the actual, you know, walk-in only seven day a week hair salon, that is not happening at all. You're talking about you had the salon in Dallas. When we started this podcast, you had two in Detroit. You moved to Dallas. You opened there. Um, All done. That's closed. All of them done. And I assume or not that this wasn't a case of you start a new business. It takes a couple of years to get momentum. You're confident that it just wasn't that it wasn't going to happen. Exactly. And so, you know, I had hired someone down here and it just kept getting worse and worse. And my problem is I wasn't edgy enough to be like, okay, next, move on, right? I kept accepting the excuses, the personal issues, the things. And so here's what I will say. Paralee Boyd is done 
but my military locations are not. Those are going to be a different brand, a different name, a different service. It is just all over different. But the good thing about that is that it has all of my knowledge and my edge. I've been broke. I've been sad. I've been depressed. And I'm never going to let that happen again because I've got a different business model. Not saying there won't be issues, but that edge and and excuse me for saying so, Lauren, but that bitch, she's front and center. She's still Dana, but quicker to fire you because I'm not going to be up worried about money because you can't get pregnant or whatever your issue is today. That means you can't come to work. Then you need to, okay, but next, and I'm going to be constantly hiring. It's never, we're never not hiring. We're always hiring. There's three stages of business, start up, throw up. You've been in throw up for a lot of years and then grow up and you've gotten to grow up that you realize what you're doing is not working and you're figuring out what you need to do. So yeah, I got to tell you 20 years ago, I, Started a new thing on the side that cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars that I look back and I think, what was I thinking? But like, you know, I figured it out eventually. So I hope you're not torturing yourself. Are you torturing yourself? I mean, torturing myself. I shouldn't I have. I couldn't I, have. I should have known better. I don't know that you could have known any of a this. A little bit. Okay. I, a d- I just bit. don't know that you could have known any of this. Let her answer. Yeah. Well, there's been a lot of money put into this, right? There's been a lot of money. And so that's why, is it, is it a bad idea in the three things that I've shared with you, yes, but it's a salon on a military base with a captive audience, giving the people what they want, making it a viable business based on setting the business model up. Instead of trying to revolutionize the industry, go with the industry and make money on a military base. And then there's other ones that are slated. So there's going to be, I don't want to say a renewal, but you know, the military option is still extremely viable. I'm on the phone with them all the time and they're still looking at me another basis. So it's still not like, Oh, this one and done because it's taken them forever and a day to open in, in Fort Bragg or Fort Liberty. But once that gets going and now I have the new business model pulling back and, and, and meeting my staff where they are. What did you tell me Jay years ago, Dana, when you were their age, you were making $150,000 a year. Yeah. You had the big job. You proved the, you, you know, the proofs in the pudding. You had a big job making a lot of money, which says that you have skill sets and a mentality or whatever that's different than someone that makes $20. My problem was I never even had that job. So it took me many years to figure out, gee, everybody doesn't think like I think. That took me 25 years to figure out, I'm sorry to say. And so I'm projecting this business acumen on those that haven't been in the same business environment that I've been in. So now when I'm hiring at Fort Liberty, I don't have that same standard because they're not going to meet it. And can you blame them? Like, can you do hair? Can you come to work on time? Can you not look like you just rolled out of bed? Great. Hired. Well, going back to the making $150,000 when you were their age, do you ever think about just going back and making $150,000 a year and working nine to five? I was miserable. I hated it. I hated it. I was miserable. And you're happy now? <laughs> well, I'm happier. Here's the thing, Laura, I thought about it. I really did think about it. But the point is that that required a lot of travel. That was, you know, over 10, 15 years ago. I'm married now. I can't just, you know, hop a flight to Pakistan and be gone for two weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my lifestyle is different. So it's worth it. It's worth it to make less so that you have a more flexible lifestyle. Well, no, no, no. She's not necessarily saying she's going to make less. I, it took me back a little bit, Laura, when you just asked that, because I just never think that way. Like, I'm an entrepreneur. This is what I do. In her case, she thinks she's going to make more money long term, and I think she can. So this isn't a matter of throwing in the towel to in five years or three years. She could be making more than 150 grand and pull it off. So Yeah, but she could also not. I mean, I think yes. that there's... Well, it's, she's, for you, that's an option. For me, that just never has been in my head, at least. Yeah, I would have let the military location go, too, if I didn't think there was any viable way of doing it. I think it's an interesting, you know, we think about it all the time. We're like, how much easier would life have been if we had just stayed as software engineers and, you know, (laughs) made good money and, you know. But there's a reason why we left and I went through my old journals and I know why I left. Well, there you go. Love that. Which is why it was a good question. No, no, right. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly, but we have three Jay. very, I didn't say it wasn't a good question. I'm just suggesting we have three very different perspectives. Like 
that has never crossed my mind in 45 years. Well, like, you've probably also never thought about just marrying somebody rich so that you don't have to deal with it yeah. as well. Like, I mean, or have you? No, but I'm thinking about it now that you put it in my head. Yeah, that would have been I know. easier. I'm telling you, once a week at least, I'm like, shit, I should have married better. Dana, I want to I want to ask you a little bit about your uh, original business model and, and what's different about the new one that you're going to use at the military base. Going back to the original business model, as I understood it, when we first started doing this podcast before the pandemic, uh, when you had two locations in Detroit, you had a model. It was based on the concept of moving your customers in and out as quickly as possible. And you won uh, a lot of money at a business plan competition because of that model. At the time, did you think you were trying to revolutionize this market and convince people to do something they hadn't been doing? Or did you think you were responding to a need in the market that was established and that people were ready for? Both. I was going after a need in the market. The, the, the tail end of that that I didn't realize is that people weren't ready for it. I thought, oh, I'll get them ready. Right. And so I knew I was revolutionizing a market because I knew there wasn't hair freedom. I knew that when black women go on vacation, they get their what, hair What do you braided. mean by that? What's hair freedom? Black women go through things in regards to their hair as far as prep, getting it ready, doing this. So when they go on vacation, a lot of them, especially if they're going to hot destinations, they've got to go get it braided. Anything not to touch their hair. Right. In case it gets wet, um, in case there gets sand in it. Whereas some of us don't go through that. Because we, we just go. We don't think about that. I've never had a wig. I've never wore a wig. And so my girlfriend, who does all the time, she said, you have a hair freedom that I don't hair. You touch your hair. I don't. I don't want to be bothered with it every day. I'll go get a wig so I don't. I'll wrap it at night and be done with it. It's just different for me. I don't wrap my hair at night. So, Dana, here's, here's what I want to know. Looking back, whatever, three years ago, do you think you were delusional? Or do you think? I think I was hopeful. Okay, I was going to say there's a thin line between optimistic and delusional. Yep. And I'm here <laughs> to tell you, since I was talking to you a lot about it, I don't think you were delusional. What you said made sense. Who knew? I've done stuff like that. I've done stuff that I've lost tons of money on that made perfect sense that it took me a long time to figure out wasn't going to work. And, and in my case, I realized I read a book about it. I'm hypomanic. I got into it and I thought I was going to pull it off and I let it go for way too long and lost lots of money that I didn't need to lose, which is why I cringe when I hear people say never, never, never quit. They leave out the second half, which is unless in good judgment, I should have thrown in the towel and moved on. I'm happy and proud of the fact you're thrown in the towel on that, but you get another plan that makes sense again. And I'm here to tell you, welcome to entrepreneurship. I've been long the tooth about this, just thinking about, you know, Dana, what were you thinking? Were you delusional? And I would have been de delusional if I had kept putting money into a business that just two people a day. There was a boom. There was a time when there was, you know, good, you know, revenue. It's just the market needed to get ready. And my girlfriends have told me the market's not going to be ready until black women in mass just feel differently about their hair. And so the new business, the one on the military basis is basically give the people what they want. And the good thing about me is I know exactly what they want. I just wanted them to feel about themselves the way I feel about them and the way I feel about myself. And that's not always the case, right? Give the people what they want. So this salon, full service. I mean, we're not doing nails or lashes, but we are cutting, coloring, uh, so in take out weave and my, my stylists are independent contractors. The split is 70, 30, 30 to them, 70 to the house. Why? Cause I'm paying for marketing. Is that competitive? Uh, is that what's out there? Cause that doesn't sound too competitive. It is. So most salons that are doing well are 70, 30. The ones that are struggling are 60, 40. Wow. What, what were you in Dallas and Detroit? I was hourly. So people got paid just for being there. Being and there. I just want to see how far you're stretching. Can Lauren and I go get our hair cut at this place? Probably not. It's going to be oh, women. It, it, well, it's, and it's on a military base, um, but we won't be doing barbering. But we'll still have the base purely void services. But I'm hiring stylists that know how to cut hair, that are coming with a book of work, that will be able to service the clients that I'm going to be marketing that we get, that can do twist outs, right? That can do certain braiding styles, um, that can do a sew-in. 
and then let the decision stand. If people want to come multicultural, that would be great. But I can't fight that hair is segregated. I can't fight that when white women see three black women doing hair, they're saying, oh, that salon's not for me. That's them. I can't fight that. All I can do is say yes. And then the few that do trust us to do it, which I don't know why they wouldn't, they just come. And we're projected to do very well. And that's just on the numbers that just the inquiries alone, the people that are waiting for me to open we're projected to do very well. But guess what? Even if we don't, 70% of the revenue comes to me. And I'm not paying triple net. Rent is based on a percentage of my revenue. That's it. 8% of my revenue. And that includes water, electricity, all that stuff. So everything that's 70% is going to go to marketing and my subscription services and putting money back into the business. And then I'll talk to Jay and say, Jay, you know, this is what I'm working with. How much of this should I pay myself? That's it. It's a different business model. Wow. When do you open? Probably November. We're looking at it. I'm just, yeah, yeah. in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And I'll head it back down there next week. And then we're taking all the stuff off the windows. We've got an electrician coming in and putting up the transformer for the chandelier. Like we're opening. So what do you do about all the debt or you'd mentioned debt um, on Paralee Boyd? Do you just kind of roll that over? Is that like, I hope so. Like that, my plan, that's why I'm even going forward It's to pay the debt. It's to pay down. It's, it's, you know, not to escape it at all, but it's to pay it down and you have to have a, a, a financial model in your business that is conducive for that. And so if you're all your overhead is, if your big two expenses, rent and payroll is all under, 35, 40%, you have room for that, I think. Let me tell you what you had that is unusual for most of us. You have all these people with big names, throwing you money, giving you awards, telling you how wonderful you are. How could you not buy some of that? I certainly never had that. Laura, did you have that? No. I mean, you're really in an interesting situation where all these big names, some of the, I mean, these are like gold, wasn't it Goldman Sachs or something? Yeah. Or Anderson Young, you Goldman Sachs. You have these names, people yeah. going, oh my God, like, how could you not start to believe your own press? I mean, it made sense. And I, I've, you know, you know, I tell you what I think. There was nothing you were doing that, that I, I, I made sense. You, let's just review. We thought the solution was you weren't charging enough. You were in the wrong market. Okay, that made sense. But I didn't know that hairstyles were different or that, I mean, and, and you obviously didn't know it either. So, oops, okay, you figured that out. So, I can't say that anything you're talking about now doesn't make sense. You're p- going to a place where the rent thing is great, with just a percentage, and they need your services. And I believe you're going to pull that off. So, I was super nervous in telling you, Jay. You know what? You are not whining. You're not licking your wounds. You figured some stuff out. You're forging on. Hats off to you. Like I said, I was your age, 20 years, 21 years ago, I went ahead and decided I was going to change the framing industry by doing a marketing campaign to get, you know, 500 frame shops to market together and advertise together and for a minimal amount of money. And it made perfect sense to me. I just forgot that I don't, that most picture framers don't think like I do. And I lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. But the point is, I let it go on for three, four years till I lost a zillion dollars when I should have figured out. Uh, after a year, it wasn't going to work. So that's a great point is like pull, the, the skill is learning to pull the plug faster. Yeah, absolutely. And not you feeling know? bad about it. Like, oops, it's not about quitting. It's about moving on. Well, just to be clear, I mean, Dana, I'm assuming you did complain and you did feel sad. Just and not you to me. Did, well, <laughs> but you have to go through that process. I mean, now you're on the other side of it. And that's, you know, Jay and I always talk about Rocky, like, you're going to get the crap beat out of you. I it's going whether you're no going to get back up. No, nope. That's not what happened at all. I have not in, I have not felt bad at all. The only thing I felt is what you guys have mentioned is what the hell took so long. But as far as my one friend said, Oh my God, it, don't you, aren't you grieving? It's a loss. No, because it wasn't serving me. It wasn't What's serving the franchising me. stuff. Like, what are you doing with that? No, there's no business to franchise. It wasn't servicing me. that part, I will say, you purposely didn't tell me about that. That one, I didn't think was a great move. Like, those people just take your money and promise you the moon. Okay, that one, I, I can't say good job on that one. But the rest of it, you were trying a new thing that seemed to make sense at the time. A lot of people, like my girlfriend's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. This is that and the other. And I think that goes a part of it. I didn't 
you know, believe my hype. Right. So that would be a part of that grieving. This is who I was supposed to be. And now I'm not. That wasn't on the table. It was no longer serving me. So I had no problem saying, you know what? Done. Now let's move on to something that will serve me and move on in life. Dana, back to your new business model. I'm guessing you're not going to be able to turn over your customers as quickly. I'm wondering if there's uh, an impact on your pricing now that you're on a military base versus um, in, in a city. How are you thinking about those things? Yep. Great questions. And so for certain services, you are going to be able to turn them over as quickly. My concern and what I'm interviewing is asking them, how long does it take? Um, and because we're expected to get bookings, keeping people waiting, that's something I talk about with people I interview. This is not what we're going to do. Let me know the allotted time so we can put it in our system. And then that's what you have to operate in. So it's going to be very collaborative with the stylist, but if it's five hours for something that should take three, then that's a conversation. Um, and then, you know, that's a conversation with the manager. That's a conversation with the stylist saying, okay, what's going on? I don't think that'll be a problem. Why? Because these girls are booth rent. Booth rent, as long as they turn their money in every week, they're fine. No, these women and maybe some men, they get 30% for every head they do. So doing one head that takes five hours and you're only here for six, you're not, you're cutting into your money. So they want to get people in and out, or they want to get those higher tickets of weeks and weeks, you know, sew-ins or whatever they're going to, or braids or whatever, because those are going to take longer, but it's a higher ticket price. Um, so as long as the money and the time match, then we'll be fine. What's the name going to be? I'm going to withhold that oh. until I open. <laughs> Maybe it's going to be called Dana Unplugged. No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything keeping you from opening at this point? Just staffing. And again, you know, it, it's so frustrating, frustrated with the military. You know, yep, I'll have an email for you tomorrow. Two weeks goes by. And so you're following up with them. Um, hey, so right now they were adamant for the whole time I've been in talks with them, no cameras in your salon. Told me yesterday, oh yeah, you can have cameras in your salon. I pulled up all the emails, no cameras through security, 82nd Airborne Division, no cameras. And so she's like, well, I'll just email you what the compatibility has to be. Um, the other hiccup is finding internet. Internet in a town like Fayetteville is not easy to come by. Um, and so when it is, it's really, it's really poor. So really bad internet, so to speak. So it's just, it's these little itty bitty things right now. If I had a stylist, she could be in there doing hair right now. She won't have internet. Um, but everything it's built out. I'm trying to picture this. You're on a military base and internet is a problem. That seems internet surprising. Is a problem. And no, internet is Because you're in kind of a shopping mall on the base, right? Exactly, exactly. And everybody has a different internet provider and they all complain. The only person in that mall that doesn't have an internet provider is Starbucks and Starbucks provides its own internet. It's a mess. Are you concerned about the impact of dealing with the military going forward on your operations? And I've talked to them. I was, but a lot of this has, is hyper-local. A lot of this is the team at that base. Um, because I said, here are the challenges I've run into. Here are the other bases that you want me to go to. How many of these challenges are, are you know, system-wide? And they said, none of them. And I said, okay, we'll see. Um, but if they are, I know, I know so much more now. That's why I said I've grown up. Dana, I think you said before that, that you've been broke. And it sounds like you haven't had a, a, a salon up and running for a while now. Have, have you been doing anything else to, to support yourself? I have. I have. So um, in March, we lost a family member. Um, she passed away March 13th. And uh, she had only pursued her retirement dream for one year. She'd only been retired for one year. And so I knew that there were some things that I wanted to do after I retired from owning this business, right? I didn't know if I was going to sell it. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I said, you know what? Once that's here, I'm going to do this. Well, in March of this year, it occurred to me that, well, you know what? You may only get six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You may not have 15 years in retirement. 
Um, and so I decided to pursue that, what I wanted to do. And I have become a flight attendant or a major mainline um, airline. Boom. Wow. Boom. Major mainline airline. Yeah. And it's, it's the best kept employment secret. I can't believe what they throw at their employees as far as Tell us. money and benefits. And so, okay. I don't feel good because I caught a cold in Paris. My husband and I just got back from Paris the other day. Okay. Is there an age limit for that job? What did you have to do to get this job? <laughs> uh, right? Right? Who do you know? No. I mean, it was a grueling training. Let's, let's, let's be very honest. It was very tough. Um, the FAA does not play. I can travel in the United States, the, in what is considered the domestic continent. So that's Hawaii, Alaska, certain parts of Mexico, Canada for free. No money. Just, Hey, Lauren, you want to have lunch? All right. Well, I can be there tomorrow by two o'clock. Hey, Jay, you want me to go? Let's go to lunch. Yeah. But you do have to work too, right? You do, but it's not what you think. I don't work more than what? 80 hours a month. What's a typical week? You fly where and how long does it take? So I have preference that all of my layovers be in Dallas. so I can come home. So I fly to base I get a layover in Dallas. I come home and I'm being paid this entire time. Then I go back to the airport. I go out to another city, come back to Dallas, layover at home, then go out to another city and then go up to base and fly home. Done. Or I go to Amsterdam. I've been to Amsterdam. I've been to Paris. I've been to Lisbon. I've been to Munich. I'm going to London and Milan. And I choose these trips. I pick them up. Just, oh, I'll go here. Boom. And you just put it on your schedule. Wow. And you can fly or as little or as much as you want with a guarantee of 11 days off a month. Guaranteed. And your thinking is that this is something that you might want to pursue after your entrepreneurial career? I thought so until she died. She died. And I said, yeah, no, I'm doing it now. And so I'm managing very well. So like next week, I don't bulk up on my flights when I need to be in North Carolina. Which is where Fort Liberty is, which used to be called Fort Bragg. So how much do you th- expect to keep doing this once your salon is up and running and you're thinking about opening another on another military base? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down to the minimum hours of flying that we need for flight and health care benefits. Because the health care benefits are ridiculously stupid. Like, I can't believe they pay you to take to go have benefits. Care for my dog when we go fly is paid for. Parking at the at the airport is free. Okay, I can understand the free parking at the airport, but it surprises me they're going to pay to babysit your dog. They pay to take care of your dog and any parents or children you have living in your home so you can fly. They remove every obstacle for getting to work. So this is why my flight prices are so freaking high right now, huh? Yep. Well, it just goes back. I'm going back to the why am I dealing with all this stress when I could just go be a flight attendant? And yeah. Okay. I'm not thinking that at all. I'm just thinking, wow, who knew? I'm scrappy. I'm scrappy. I'll do whatever I have to do. I'm even during COVID, I delivered for Amazon. I'm scrappy. I'm not proud. I don't believe my height. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'll do whatever. I did Amazon flex for months during COVID in my G6 delivering packages to people's door. But the priority is getting open and getting these people on this base to do what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it. David, did you pause at all on this? Did if taking another job, did it feel like quitting to you? Did it make you think that you might not have the energy to put into the business you're trying to build? Not at all. And I would have felt that way if the job, if the salon needed me to be there. With the new business model, it doesn't. The barbershop owners live in Hawaii. They're never there. Now, will I be there twice a month? Sure, and that's separate than me flying for a main line. But I have a career at this main line that allows for that. I don't have to report it. I could take a whole month off if I wanted to and not fly at all. Like when we bought the Tosh business in Texas, I mean, I had basically planned to be there three out of four weeks for the first three months, at least, you know, to get things running, to make, 
you know, just to be there. Um, do you kind of have the same thought process? Yeah. But carefully though, I got to be very careful because when they meet the owner, they get a little crazy. I'm going to be there. But again, these are independent contractors. I'm pretty much there going to be there to make sure you don't look crazy and that you're doing good hair. You're going to hire one manager, one salaried person to run the whole thing though? Yes, but not right away. That's why I'm going to be there more. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Once I'm very clear on what the manager is going to do, and I hate to say it, and Jay, you might think I'm, I'm wrong for this, but as soon as I hire her, I'm prepared to fire her. Just that simple. Like, I'm just going to be, I'm not going to hire her and be like, oh, this is my manager forever. No, I'll probably fire you in six months if you don't prove me wrong. Okay. Now, why would you think I would disagree with that? I would think you should keep someone around that can't do the job. No, no, no. Just because I didn't want you to think I wasn't being optimistic. No, I, I listen, you never know when you get hiring, you do the best you can and hopefully you get good at it. And 80% of the time it works out, but 20% of the time it doesn't. But Jay, I was so, I, here's why I was nervous about telling you, not because I felt you were going to be like, Dana, what are you thinking? You're dumb. This is dumb. It was just that, you know, this is a, this is a switch a growth moment that I hope our, you know, mentor mentee relationship can ride through. When I was Paralee Boyd riding high, you hear from everybody. And when you're Paralee Boyd, you know, okay, this has got to stop. A lot of their identity to me was based on that. And I know ours wasn't because we've talked about so many other things, but when you're making a big life change, you're growing up and you respect Laura and Lauren. I mean, don't get me wrong, you guys. I was nervous about telling you too. <laughs> I was. I was like. Just not as nervous. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because <laughs> Laura's, I, you know, I thought Laura might be, oh, she's not in this with me anymore. She doesn't know. Done. I thought Laura would be, you know, she doesn't really have any more added valuable content for the, for the podcast anymore. Don't really need to talk to her. These are all the things that went through my mind and that I accepted. And same thing with Jay. I was like, you know, Jay might be like, you know what? That, you know, she's not Paralee Boyd anymore. I knew you guys are going to be proud of the transition, but what I hope you'll find is that as I grow up and you continue to watch me grow up, watch the military locations on, on, you know, unroll and you watch maybe the product line on these bases go, then you'll see, okay, great. That's it. All right. Well, we are out of time. On that note, my thanks to Jay Goltz, Dana White, and Laura Zander, and to our sponsor, The Great Game of Business, which helps businesses use an open book management system to build healthier companies. You can learn more at greatgame.com. Dana, thanks for sharing all this with us. Obviously, uh, we do want to <laughs> keep talking to you, and we want to hear how it's going, uh, except when you're in Paris. Right. We don't want to hear any more about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know. Thanks, everybody. Wait, wait, don't leave yet. If you have a question or a comment that you'd like the 21 Hats owners to address, send it to me by replying to your morning report or by email at lauren at 21hats.com. That's L-O-R-E-N at 21hats.com. Do it now before you forget. And don't be afraid to tell Jay what you really think. He can take it. And if you got something out of this conversation, help us reach more business owners. Tell a friend. Subscribe and review us wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to The Morning Report at 21hats.com. This episode was produced by Jess Thuberon, founder of Blank Word Productions. Okay, now you can leave. Thanks for listening, everyone.